What's up, witches? It's Jen again. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Okay, so that wasn't my usual intro, but I'm feeling feisty today. And you want to know why I'm feeling feisty? Because I took a nature walk and I feel fantastic about it. I found a bunch of cool stuff on my nature walk. I'm going to uh, insert photos of hagstone. Um, oh, I'm so bad at this. I'll fix it all in editing. Giant hagstone, morel mushrooms, my potted plant. Hello. It was just, anyways, if you follow me on Insta, you'll, I'll tell you the whole story. I went on a nature walk and I found a bunch of stuff. I guess that's the end of the story. Well, actually, it's not the end of the story. I found, okay, so I've been wanting to like have a little house plant and, um, I just, I don't know what, why I don't have one right now. It's because I'm living with my in-laws, so you know, I'm like living in a living room until we get our own place again. And so it's like ugh, a whole thing. Um, but I'm like, I want a house plant to take care of. It's going to make me feel good. I want like my little herb garden and my house plant. Anyways, point is I was out in the fields today, just going on our nature walk. And I found literally a potted plant in the middle of a field. It was all like rusted over and like the bottom had fallen out and like the plant was growing upside down. It was a whole thing. Anyways, I'll insert the picture here. Um, all right. Um, I'm out of breath. If you're wondering what I am drinking right now, it is this. I don't know. And then will that help? Yeah, okay. Salted caramel uh, black tea by Bigelow. It's just a grocery store brand. But it's like hella good, honestly. I think it's just chicory, yeah? Yeah, chicory, rose hips, and black tea. Okay, yeah, so um, they pretend it's salted caramel, but it's really just chicory. But it is really, really good tea, so. Anyways. Uh, let's just get into the video. Y'all don't want to hear me ramble? Oh, by the way, okay, so, sorry, backtrack, I'm gonna ramble. Thank you guys so much for giving me over 300 subscribers out of like literally nowhere. Like I don't know what I'm doing, what I'm doing right, what I'm doing left. Thank you guys. Um, 352 subscribers the last time I checked. So I'm pretty like stoked. I don't know how to feel. Um, I probably should start putting more effort in like, I don't know, washing my nappy hair before I film. But you know, I haven't gotten there yet. You know, I'm not, I'm not Shane Dawson. Hey, what's up you guys? Yes. Oh, and let's talk about another thing. This shirt. <laughs> I found at a thrift store and I was like, I bet from far away if you squint, this looks like Gucci. So I had to get it because, you know, I like to be real enlightened and like in tune with the universe and just like a real high vibe kind of a chick. But here's the thing. I'm obsessed with designer brands ever since I like saved up my money and bought a Louis Vuitton when I was in high school and then some crackhead I mean I don't say that to be rude but literally it was a crackhead stole it from me I've been obsessed with designer things ever since like losing that one Louis Vuitton purse like upset my life so anyways point is um, I am always trying to find things that either look like designer could pass as designer or um, our designer and I'm like getting them hella cheap. So I got this because I thought I could pass for Gucci. I can it? No, it can't. When, when I wear it, I feel stupid, but I love it too. I, I like it anyway, cause I think it's cool looking, but it's, it doesn't, it's not gonna pass for Gucci. Anyways, uh, today's video, 10 tips for beginning your craft. You beginner, you know, you're just starting your whole journey. Um, these are some really, really, good tips for you. Tips I wish I had like taken when I was starting so many years ago. Am I old? I'm having a crisis. <laughs> okay, so let's get into it. Number one, you don't need expensive tools. Now I've said this in like a million other videos, you, you really don't. Tools can be really, really helpful and effective, but you don't have to break the bank for them. You can make your own tools out of cheap or free items that you have in the house. You can use um, herbs and spices that you already have on hand. Uh, you can use 
You can make your own like smudge sticks and smudge wands out of if you have nature around you, you have things to bring in your home to help you. So um, for cleansing, like this little cedar bundle, and this is from cedar from my backyard. Boom, smudge stick. You know what I'm saying? Like you don't have to go buy all these expensive things and I'll kind of get into it more in tip number seven whatever there's another tip in which this will tie in so we'll get to it tip number two it's all about you witchcraft is so subjective and unique to each person that is practicing it it is all about you it is your craft what you feel your intuition your vibes your everything it is all don't get caught up in wanting to be someone else like say you watch harmony nights videos all the time and you like love her she's got aesthetic she's everything she says is just like on point and you just like love her but you're not her so don't try to follow her specific path and do everything the way that she does it because it's about you and what feels right to you and in the end if something doesn't feel right to you, it's not it's not going to be, you're not going to have a lot of success in your craft and you're going to feel a little like there's something missing when you um, do your workings because you're not anybody else, you're you. So celebrate it. Witch. Tip number three. Wicca is not witchcraft. Wicca is a religion. Witchcraft is a practice. Um, Wicca is a religion. And um, if you study up on that and that really resonates with you and you feel like you would like to follow that as a religion, that is great. But you do not have to be a Wiccan to be a witch. You can follow any religion. You can have no religion. You can worship the flying spaghetti monster for all I care. You don't have to be a Wiccan to be a witch. Witchcraft practice. Wicca. Religion. Okay. <sighs> I'm really out of breath on a real level okay tip number four spell work or spell won't work it's all about trial and error really and um you know I personally like you can find spell upon spell upon spell in like books on the internet everywhere you go there's a spell so what I find works best I mean for me in my own personal practice because I've been doing it for a really long time is kind of tailoring spells to suit me personally um, or just writing my own but as far as spell work goes it's it's really it's hit or miss it's trial and error it's you find something that works for you something that hits right for you and that's that's all you can really do I mean there's no like guidebook to tell you hey here are all the spells that totally work and here's all the ones that don't so um, you know, just really be mindful of that. It's when you're first starting, you're not going to get it perfect every time. You could have some not so great results and that's fine. That's okay. That's all part of the learning process. And it's kind of important for those um, errors in your trial and error because they really help build you and your craft. So anyways, I cannot breathe. Tip number five, cleanse, cleanse everything. Cleanse your home, cleanse your sacred space, cleanse your feet. I don't know. <sighs> cleanse your tea cup. Cleanse everything. Because that's such an important, first of all, it's just important in general for any of your workings to um, go the way you want them to. But it's also important for your energy and your mindset. You just cleanse everything. It's like one little witchy thing that you can do that every beginner can do and you can do it all the time anytime so yeah cleansing is just one of those things that it's simple and it really is like effective and affects your craft and and in yourself in a really profound way so um cleansing all the time just do it it's smoke cleansing if you do that there are spray cleansers um you can visualize your cleansing i find that i personally like i can I can do it, but I feel better <laughs> if I have like a tool with me to do it. So 
back to tip number one where I said you don't need tools. I mean, you kind of need something to cleanse with. I mean, if you're good at visualization, you don't, but I like to have something. It really helps me. Um, also, I was going to say something and I totally forgot. Hello. Anybody home here? There's um, sound cleansing. You can do cleansing sound baths or singing bowls, uh, bells. Um, there's so many different ways to cleanse and pretty much all of them are like free or cheap. So cleansing is the one thing you can do. First of all, it is very witchy. Second of all, it is really important. Third of all, it's super easy. And fourth of all, fourthly, it's, it's cheap or free depending on how you do it. So cleansing. Um, number six, research. Don't get overwhelmed by your research, but research. Look into different kinds of magic, different kinds of um, deities, different kinds of witches, different kinds of this and that, and kind of feel what resonates to you and kind of look into that. And um, the kind of magic that you want to do, the kind of things that you want to do with your craft, um, research those and find like your herbal correspondences, your color correspondences, and instead of like buying a hundred expensive tools that you'll only use a couple of, kind of know your focus and you can get, you know, a couple of expensive tools, but they will be tools that you use all the time. So they'll pay for themselves. You know, you don't have to have like 5 million crystals and a freaking herb garden with every herb that's ever been grown in the world in it. You just need what you need for you. And then as you need extra little things here and there, you can pick them up along the way. But what you really just, what I would suggest is to really sit down and kind of dig into um, your ancestral history, dig into your interests. Um, if you say you are really fond of or you feel really drawn to just take something that interests you and kind of pull on that for well what kind of witchy little things go with this like um say you are a big fan of say you love to cook um you can start studying kitchen magic kitchen witchery um say that you're uh really into kind of improving your intuitive psychic abilities and you like to uh, read tarot and you want to learn more about that get yourself a good tarot deck get yourself some amethyst or whatever stone calls to you for your own psychic abilities it all depends on your own intuition but i find amethyst is very good for that um and get you some tools that are like really associated with that one interest and really hone in on that interest and build on that build yourself a foundation find and also learn the basics you need to get cleansing, grounding, um, the basics. So just kind of get your little foundation going and then you don't have to buy so many expensive tools. You can pick a couple that are really going to be used by you, used, used by you a lot. And then, so that's a lot better. I feel also, um, say you're drawn to a specific deity, like you see, uh, a name somewhere you've watched a movie or you've read a book and something in that like calls to you uh, seek it out Se seek it out and um, learn more about it and find out if that's something you want to work with in your craft so I feel like I'm blabbering on about this one too much um <laughs>time you do a tarot reading for yourself or any form of divination uh, write it down write down what it was about was it a general reading what the question was um, what cards you got your interpretation of them what all the different cards mean uh, specifically and just really keep record of everything every time you try a new ritual or spell write down everything that you did everything that happened and then Later, when it either works or doesn't work or works a weird way or whatever, you can write that down as your result and then boom, there you are. You've got something down in paper that you can remember, oh, this didn't work for me or oh, this did work for me or oh, this worked weird for me. So 
is keep records of everything. In fact, I would suggest keeping four specific journals. Um, you want to have your book of shadows, book of mirrors, a shadow work journal, and a divination journal. So in your book of shadows, you would be putting, you know, things that you've learned, different spells that you've done that have worked for you, um, rituals that you've done, um, things that you're learning about herbal correspondences and color correspondences and deities, all of that information that you're learning and soaking in goes there. Boom. And then in a book of mirrors, that is your reflections. That's um, what you're really going to reflect on. You want to write down how you feel about things, um, specific rituals, specific spells, specific things you've learned. How do you feel about those things? Um, what have they taught you? Just really um, take time to be introspective and reflect on your craft and um, keep a journal like that. It's really helpful, honestly. And then, there you go. Journal number three is for a divination journal. That is where I would write down. I like to have a separate one for it um, because I like, I compartmentalize. So you should too. It's a healthy coping mechanism. <laughs> so um, yeah, your divination journal, you're going to want to keep records of your, every time you read your tarot, every time you cast your runes, um, whatever kind of divination work that you do or are learning to do. Every time you do that, uh, you want to record everything about that, uh, date it, record everything about it, and then you've got like a good little history to flip back through um, to really build on your intuitive skills. And also just to like, you know, remember, hey, this is where I was at this time and now look at me. You know what I mean? Just keep your divination journal. This is, I don't know if you've, <laughs> what I've been doing is tossing aside my invisible uh, metaphorical journals that I'm talking about. That's why I keep, I don't know what's wrong with me. Listen, I am a mess, a hot, hot mess. But, uh, hey, look, my Sailor Moon doll. <laughs> I literally, okay, I already like did this in a video, I'm pretty sure, where I like got awkward and was like, hey, look at my Sailor Moon doll. But honestly, this is super cool and everyone should see it. And know that I'm f way cooler than you because I have this 1989 Bandai Namco Sailor Moon Adventure doll. Well, there's that. This video is going downhill quickly. Okay, let's just, let's just, um, okay. Tip number nine. Don't try any kind of spell work if you are in a bad mindset. If you're in a bad headspace, um, you're feeling really, really just like, you're drudging through your day and you're just like, oh, I gotta do this spell and I'm just, you know, just don't do it. You know what I mean? Don't make yourself do something, especially if you're in a really negative headspace. It's going to affect everything. It's either, <clears throat> hello, it's either going to make things not work for you or work not the way that you want them to. So, you know, don't force yourself if you really just are in a really negative headspace and you're trying to do some kind of, you know what I mean? Just don't. It's a good idea not to. It's a bad idea too. It's a good idea not to. Oh, I suck at this. I don't know how I got this many subscribers so fast because I am freaking terrible. <laughs> Holy guacamole. All right. So yeah, anyways, just don't, don't do any spell work when you're in a negative headspace. Try to really um, do some things to calm yourself down or to get yourself into a better headspace. Uh, cleanse. Hello. Brought that back around, didn't I? Uh, <laughs> um, do some yoga. I cannot say this enough to, like, literally every human that I meet in the world. Do yoga. It's so beneficial. Say it with me. Beneficial. Okay, so, um, yes, do yoga. Uh, in fact, I would suggest if you look her up here on YouTube, Yoga with Adrian. She is incredible. Greatest yoga channel on the planet. I do her yogas like all the time, every day. Specifically, her yoga for inner space travel I like a lot. And um, a yoga to fill your cup, I like that one. So, <coughs> 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 so. 
so yeah, do some yoga. That will really help. Um, meditate, sit and meditate for a while. Um, do some deep breathing exercises. Um, get out in nature, kind of ground yourself, connect with the earth, walk barefoot through the grass. I don't know. Whatever you like to do to put yourself in a positive mood. If you like to, I don't know, drink bush beer and watch trauma horror movies, do that. <laughs> I mean, who's to tell you what the right way is, right? Just so long as you get yourself in a more positive mindset. And then you can do your rituals and your spell work and blah, blah, blah. So, there you go. I am in no condition to be giving anyone advice. Good lord. Okay, we're almost done. This this train wreck's about wrapped up. So, tip number 10 and the last tip for this video. I will probably do a part two of this um, fairly soon. Just today I'm kind of a hot mess and all over the place. But tip number 10. Learn the phases of the moon. The moon is as important to magic as it is to the tides. You know what I'm saying? The moon phases are really important. Learn all of the moon phases, um, what workings are best for each moon phase, um, and what workings are not so good for each moon phase. Uh, learn, you know, just really get a good basic of your moon phases because that's really going to help you a lot in your craft because there are times when the moon is doing something that contradicts what you're trying to do. And there are times when the moon is doing something that could like pew, make that ish work great. And you're not doing it because you're like, I don't know. Uh. Anyways, point is learn the phases of the moon, <laughs> learn the phases of the moon. So that's, um, those are my tips to you guys. Now, um, I just want to get serious for a second. Uh, I have a very dear friend. Her name is Daisy. She is my best friend. I love her so very much. We used to work together at McDonald's. It's a whole thing. Um, she is, uh, suffering from a dissociative identity disorder, but she's coping really well. She's amazing, so strong. And she also, um, is pregnant right now. And the father is not a very nice man and, um, is not helping her out at all. And so she uh, can't find a job because of this whole COVID-19 business right now. And she's struggling to find housing and um, find work. And so um, I'm just going to link her YouTube, Instagram, and Patreon down below. Um, if you want to check her out, she has a Patreon. She's a really amazing writer. She has a channel here on YouTube where you can learn um, about her disorder if you want to. And... Um, if you have anything you can donate or contribute uh, to helping her, you know, kind of get back on her feet for her and her baby, um, that would be really great. I'm not going to link my own PayPal in this video. I'm only going to link her stuff because I think um, this is a time we should all be helping each other. And uh, so I just wanted to give her a shout out and ask, you know, if anyone out there, you know, has the means to do it. Um, if you want to help her out a little bit, anything would help. So there you go. Um, anyways, that's my friend Daisy. Her name is Daisy Air here on YouTube, um, and on Instagram and on her Patreon. Um, so, and she's writing a book right now. It's really beautiful. You can read it on her Patreon. So, um, anyways, I'll link all her stuff down below. If you feel the call to, um, donate to her or um, give her some kind words of encouragement uh, that would be really really great because she's a very good friend of mine and I just love her so much and she deserves better than she's gotten okay so thank you so much for watching if you've made it this far um, thank you for 350 freaking subscribers thank you for sitting through my messes of videos I really I'm not even good at this <laughs> but I'm really thankful and I'm really proud and humbled and um you know the outpour of like really positive energy that I've gotten is it's really amazing so thank you guys so much um I love you and <clears throat> sorry hot mess out see you next time